Alrighty, part two of episode eight of Smack Talk, and now we're going to talk about the 2011 Slammy Awards, or rather, the lack of Slammy Awards, as they seem to be completely missing half of the fucking awards this time. No match of the year, no reaction of the year, no breakout star of the year, which they kept promoting over and over again. Smart idea. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. I friggin' hated this episode. I I didn't hate it as much because the Fatal Four Way. The Fatal so Four Way was yeah. great. The Fatal Four Way was great. I'll give you that. Pretty you much everything else in the whole best night. Was... Workers in the mid card, working their asses off, and the rest of the show was complete and utter forgettable. Even the JR rapping thing. Oh my. Ugh. Let's start right there because that was the very beginning of this, and I. I, I can't curse enough here. God fucking damn it. <laughs> Boomer Suter. They start off a three-hour episode of Raw with something that is ridiculous like that. What? Who, uh, who fucking had this idea? Is this the same person that thought it was a good idea to have Beth and Natalia run around the ring and jog? Is, it, that, is that the same person who's fucking pitching these ideas? Admit who you are. And calm down slowly. Oh my god, I I was and fucking Nia floored. Tony, you're gonna beat your fucking <laughs> ass. I was floored. I could not understand this. It was like when I saw. Okay, it was tell me I did not see that moment. I'm like, okay, they're gonna start off with a little bit of comedy. That's fine. Get everybody laughing. Start the mood off with a light kind of a mixture, and then you can start getting into like the heavy angles and everything. Fine, but. Then they start doing the Jim Ross dancing shit, and it's like uh, they're gonna uh, Jim Ross and Rudy. Uh, like they're gonna uh, give it to Jim Ross. I know it. They're gonna give it to Jim Ross because they always take any opportunity they can to make Jim Ross look like a jackass. I have no clue why, but uh, I didn't like the Jim Ross dancing thing the first time they showed it, uh, let alone showing it again and then giving it an award and then having. Uh, 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 then they start doing this rap off. And Jim uh-huh. Ross can't, he can't remember any of the fucking lyrics. And the lyrics, there were two lines in it. I mean, <laughs> I yeah, he's not a performer, so to speak. They shouldn't have but he makes it. his... They should have just had Jim Ross tell Michael Cole that he thinks he's a fucking douchebag for bringing up his Bell's palsy. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the it. way, dick comment, <laughs> the whole, there's nothing wrong with my face. That was, oh, that was fucking low. <laughs> from someone who's actually suffered Bell's palsy, Michael Cole could go fuck himself with a chainsaw. <laughs> well, this whole segment, I mean, I was I was rooting for our truth the he got okie doked by little Jimmy. <laughs> he should have won an award. He should have won a, he should have won all of the awards as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but no, this this whole Jim Ross thing was just atrocious. I mean, it was it was probably one of the worst segments I've seen on Raw this year. And, and I've seen Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, I, I would give the Pee Wee Herman shit a better ranking than this. This was just terrible. And to start <laughs> a show off with it like that, where if there's anybody who's not familiar with wrestling, and of course not familiar with the current storylines, where they're turning on whatever's supposed to come, I think it's like NCIS or something like that comes on before this, they turn this on and they're like, oh, what the hell is this? Oh, well, let me check it out. Wait a minute. They've just got this uh, overweight guy doing this half-assed rap. All right, I'm just going to shut this shit off. Don't you want to start your wrestling show with something that'll hook people on for the whole show, not make them laugh at it and go, oh, this is the hokey bullshit that we make fun of wrestling for? Uh, You can tell this idea was probably came out straight out of Vince's ass. The Kiss My Ass Club? <laughs> no, it's because apparently he has the final say on everything. Yeah. He I... has the, he makes the show get rewritten about four to five times. It's ridiculous. Well, if it was Vince's idea, somebody needs to get him checked to see if he's gone senile. And if it, <laughs> uh, if it wasn't and it was Triple H's, somebody needs to make sure he doesn't get anywhere near as in charge as his COO character is supposed to be. They and if Vince just go to him, Triple H, no, 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 no. We'll, 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 give you, uh, we'll give you some compensation here, and we'll have you put over yourself in something. You'll you'll enjoy that. 
Triple H <laughs> versus the imaginary bear. The fight to the <laughs> death. Uh, so yeah, horrible, horrible, horrible start to this whole thing. The award was pointless. The segment was bullshit. I didn't enjoy it at all. Then we go to the holy shit moment or the holy bleep moment. Now I enjoyed seeing Ted with um, Foley. Now yeah. the, the first thing I thought was where's <laughs> where's the connection between DiBiase and Foley? And then of course they go where's the connection? I'm like, all right, thankfully you've got enough sense to uh, address that point and not finish that sentence. Right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the nominees: Sheamus powerbombs Sin Cara through uh, the ladder at Money in the Bank. Orton Ar- should have won it. Eh, I don't know. That was Orton, lethal. Orton RKO is Christian on the steel steps. Yeah, B- yeah. Uh, Big Show and Mark Henry collapsed the ring. Easy winner, I would think. Which it no. did. That, I that was it was. about Rock Lesnar and fucking Show before. Why should that win a fucking slamming? Yeah, because it's still better. That's two fat men falling in a ring and it collapsed. And then the other one, uh, airborne off the ladder. Now that one's crazy too. So I would have been fine with them giving it to that, but they're certainly not going to give Evan Bourne an award when he can't uh, really promote himself on the mic that well. And he's just gotten off that suspension and everything. So it Ruggie. was it was more than obvious that the Henry and Show with your four fucking fifty splash. Um. So I didn't really have a problem with that. I mean, I did. I had a problem with Evan Bourne. Fuck uh, Karen Jarrett, right? Yes. <laughs> Even though she has nothing to do with it, it's her fault. Everything's her fault. Then we had Pipe Bomb of the Year. Another. Let's just. Uh, Why didn't the award go to CM Punk for this? It did. He originated the fucking pipe bomb. It, it did. He won. What well, pipe bomb of the year? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. That shows how much I was paying attention to the show. <laughs> I think it should have went to R Truth. Half of the whole promo was just R Truth segment stuff. Little Jimmy. He wants his son back. Come on. <laughs> uh, but I hate how they don't clarify these awards. What is the pipe bomb of the year supposed to be? Was it supposed to be. I thought it was the fuck up of the year because that's what most of them seem to be like. It seemed like it was like the, the oddest thing of the year when it comes to mic work. But then some of the stuff, if I remember correctly, some like one or one or two of the things that they had in that promo had nothing to do with being on the mic. So yeah, it was more like uh, the funny joke of the year kind of a thing. Uh, well, you saw a lot of people screwing up on the mic because I saw like Teddy Long and all that just screwing up on the mic. Yeah, they weren't doing anything; they were just fucking up. And speaking of fuck ups, we had the Divalicious Award, which just replaced the Diva of the Year, I guess. I, I don't know. They were promoting Diva of the Year, and then that disappeared. It was hosted by the winner of I Got Pulled Over Because I Was So Drunk Award. Then we had a. Um, fucker. Yeah. Uh, I actually was thinking about doing a whole thing about Lita for this episode, and. That we have 10 parts and stuff, and I realized, you know what, there's not really anything to talk about. She kind of already made fun of herself and everything, so I give her a little bit of credit for that. Instead of trying to say, uh, it wasn't me, it was somebody with my same last name or some kind of crap like that. Her name was Nita, not Nita. So, uh, Lita's oh, involvement just, was kind of pointless. I just want to say one more thing. Fuck you, Karen Jarrett. <laughs> Uh, the nominees were Natalia's Double Sharpshooter, which I thought was awesome. That's always awesome. Uh, Karma attacking Michelle McCool. I don't know why they threw that in there. Because I mean, Michelle McCool needs attacking. Just to keep Karma in our uh, memories or something, maybe? I don't know. Kelly Kelly wins the Divas title, and of course that won mm. the award. And then Beth glam slams E from the top rope, which I thought was decent too. So that was decent. I would have given it to Natalia's double sharpshooter, but then again, they're doing these all for storyline purposes. So of course Kelly Kelly wins, so she can slap Beth. Yeah. Kelly Kelly needs to slap herself. Seriously, go in the mirror and just go. You don't deserve any of these awards because you made that comment about Playboy. What Stop. comment? She made a comment back a couple of years ago when the WWE was still affiliated with Playboy. And she basically made it out that Playboy was the most important thing 
more important than winning the fucking Divas Championship. Well, I if you give me a choice between Kelly wins the Divas Championship and Kelly poses for Playboy, I know what I'm voting for. <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, oh my God, moment of the year. Triple H, Tombstones, Undertaker, Rock Bottom on John Cena, the WWE walkout, and CM Punk leaves Money in the Bank with a WWE title. Surprise, That's surprise. That's a conclusion. It should be Punk. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Triple H wins. He steals, yeah. another, steals another thing from Punk, like this whole... Uh, Momentum. And, uh, what annoyed me the that most about this... Nash, what the fuck? What pissed me off the most about this wasn't just, oh, Triple H won another thing, let's criticize him. I try to give Triple H a little bit of credit here and there. but He does try. But then again, he doesn't even bother getting the slammy. He acts like he's completely above it. And then cuts a promo about how he ended the streak. No, you fucking didn't. So now, now are we? There's rumors that they're going to do a third fucking Triple H against Undertaker match at WrestleMania. I do not want to see that. I didn't even want to see Triple H against Undertaker a hundred percent this time around. I thought it was an okay idea for him to do it after the Shawn Michaels thing. But then again, I didn't want to see Undertaker against Shawn Michaels the second time around. I wanted to see Triple H versus Shawn Michaels back at WrestleMania 26. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's a whole different story, but he cuts a whole promo about how he ended the streak Th this, no, you didn't. And now are, are we honestly supposed to just bow down? He, it had to be Undertaker winning the match, of course, but then of course, since it's Triple H, Undertaker has to be the one getting carted out because, oh, Triple H is the one who... He beat the shit out of him more than anybody else ever did because Triple H is the man. And now he's saying he uh, he's the one who ended the streak. And now we're going to get a potential another match. I don't want to see this anymore. I want to see Undertaker put somebody else over, even if it means he's winning the match. Even if it's – I keep saying that I want Undertaker against Wade Barrett. But I'll tell you what. I would rather have Undertaker against Jack Swagger, against Sheamus, against Brodus Clay, against Cody Rhodes, against even Mark Henry again. You know who I want to see him against? Hornswoggle. All right, well, I would pick Triple H over that. <laughs> but I would rather see Undertaker against almost anybody else on the roster than Triple H. And I want Triple H to just stop with this fucking ego shit. It's pissing yeah, me off. It's pissing everybody off. So moving on from that, because I could go on for hours about this, and we don't have enough time so for you, that. <laughs> you didn't even allow me to talk. I just sat there and listened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I could do a whole... Uh, all right, well, you know what? <laughs> Trending star of the year. Zack Ryder, Dolph Ziggler, Cody Rhodes, and Daniel Bryan. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did they not say that the winner of the match between the four of them and the Fatal 4-Way would win the award? Yep. And then Dolph Ziggler wins the match, and then immediately afterwards, Zack Ryder wins the award. And then Dolph Ziggler just you know, takes it from him. Okay. And then he pummels him, takes the award, stands there and goes, Yeah, I got a slummy! Yeah, he pulls an Owen Hart. Yep. I miss you, Owen. <laughs> it was me, Austin! And um, that's where, of course, where we had the Fatal 4-Way match, was, which was fantastic. Uh, no complaints about Ryder winning it. I completely don't see how Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes are in this trending star of the year thing, though. There's a lot. The way I see it, I think they just did it to keep both views consistent. Oh, yeah, because but I mean... Like going to pull the trigger on Bride versus Rhodes soon. So they just need to keep both both consistent. And what the best way to do it, have all four guys in one match. Right, but it's one of those things where they were thinking too much of, let's make a storyline out of this, as opposed to, let's make sense. <laughs> uh... Then we had Game Changer of the Year. Triple H fires Vince McMahon, Edge retires, Kevin Nash attacks CM Punk, and The Rock and Cena agree to their WrestleMania match. Again, surprise, surprise, we have to give an award to The Rock and John Cena here. Uh, this, is, this is another one of those random awards, something that we can talk about kind of things. I'm sure next year if they do the Slammies, we're not going to have a Trending Star of the Year award. We're not going to have a Game Changer of the Year award. Divalicious Award's probably going to go back to Divas, uh, Diva of the Year. Maybe we'll get Match of the Year, but it seems like they kind of don't care about that. So, 
So what did you think? Game changer of the year. Um, oh, I don't know really. Truthfully, it. I think the right person won the award. That's pretty much it. I, again, it was one of those things where it was like, yeah, he won it. Great. I'm sure um, that but, some of the younger fans were probably like, oh, yay. And, you know, you got to be a little bit uh, willing to suspend your disbelief and you got to buy into that because it's not just for the 20 something year old guys, it's for the kids too. So, yeah. But cool. still, still, I am me and I don't like things I don't like. So. <laughs> <laughs> Did Cena win that award, wasn't it? Or was that a punk? Cena was the one who accepted the award. It was the Rock and Cena winner. Yeah, it was the Rock and Cena, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, again, it was one of those ones where I felt punk should have won it. But I'm not going to complain. I'd have gone with... Um, see, if I would have gone with the Triple H Fires McMahon one for that one. And not the Triple H Tombstones Undertaker for the other match. Or True. the... Or the Edge Retires one, but then they had Christian come out and do that, and that's that kind of threw me off. I was like, kind of expecting Edge to win it after Christian came out, but then, you know, when they give it, when you've got uh, Rock and Cena there, any time that they can give anything to them is not a surprise. Yeah, because it's Rock and Cena, so right. we have to promote the piss out of it without doing anything. And then that leads us to a lister of the year. Ugh. And it went to fucking Snooky. Snooky and CeeLo Green and Hugh Jackman and the Muppets. Uh, Why didn't the Muppets win this? <laughs> I, did you know what I mean? I it's was pretty, begging for Kermit. It's pretty awful when I can sit there and go, I was rooting for the Muppets to win a Slammy Award, and I'm disappointed because of the thing that looks like a Muppet won instead. <laughs> she looks like Fozzy Bear. Yeah, she does. I don't know. <laughs> Why uh, and another thing I, I was just thinking to myself, how come David Otunga presents the Trending Star Award? Uh, what, it's something I forgot to mention here. David Otunga presenting Trending Star of the, war, uh, of the Year Award and Tony Atlas. What the fuck? Oh, 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 oh. oh my God. That All right, we're going to throw that into the same pile as who Sounded thought it was like a good a idea. With, seal. The same person who thought it was a good idea with the Jim Ross shit and the jogging around the ring and whatever. This guy needs to get Whoever fired. you are, we're going to find you. <laughs> and so, we're going to rape you. Something I thought was funny about the A-lister thing, I was like, they spent all this time calling David Otunga the A-list uh, superstar. And he's doing the trending star, and Vicky Guerrero does this one. Continuity. <laughs> so, uh... I don't want to talk about Snooki anymore because that'll hurt my soul. Then we had that's my bad bits. Superstar of the year. Actually, before we get to superstar of the year, let's go down the little. Uh, they had um, some extra ones on WWE.com. There and they were even more ridiculous than the other ones. They had outstanding achievement in Muppet resemblance. Going to Sheamus. Kind of curious what the other nominees would have been there, but <laughs> they didn't list nominees. Karen Jarrett was one of the nominees, I could tell. <laughs> Fuck you, Karen Jarrett. Then we had the Pee Wee Herman bow tie award given to David uh, Tonga. Ugh. The most predictable outcome of the year, Kevin Ash powerbomb Santino. I was rooting for Santino there. I don't know. Guess who's back return of the year? With The Rock, the double vision moment of the year, Sin Cara and Sin Cara. Because no one could tell which one was which. Except for Booker. Yep. <laughs> the t-shirt of the paper. year. T-shirt of the year, which did not go to Sin Cara for his penis shirt. Should have done. Should have. Uh, CM Punk's best in the world, one for that. Then we had the WWE.com exclusive of the year when John Laurinaitis congratulates CM Punk. Uh, the most regrettable ring attire of the year, Michael Cole dressed as Triple H. The critter moment of the year when that mouse ran by uh, Alberto Del Rio on Raw. They give, they give uh, the Angry Miss Girl an award. They give Snooki an award. They give one to a mouse 
And they don't have enough time for match of the year. <laughs> with the, damn it. Then superstar transformation of the year, Zack Ryder. And then that brings us back to superstar of the year. The Miz, John Cena, CM Punk, Del Rio, Mark Henry, Randy Orton. I guessed Alberto Del Rio. I was wrong. I guessed CM Punk. I was right. Ten points for you. <laughs> Good. Uh, not a shocking result. Not, nope. Not against it at all. Punk do, does deserve it. So. Yep. Punk uh, does deserve it. And I love the fact... Uh, I loved his uh, Johnny Ace promo when he accepted his first award. Yeah, I didn't like Johnny Ace coming down and accepting Punk's award for him because he sounded like a bland piece of shit. You don't like John Laurinaitis? Oh, his promos are boring. He's boring. I kind of like him. I hate to admit it. You could put a <laughs> fucking trained chimp out there and hold the microphone. It would do a better job than John Laurinaitis. If you don't know it, you will know it. Get it. Got it. Good. <laughs> well, the only other thing to talk about, well, you know, I'm going to, we're going to skip to another part in a second. Uh, before we do that, the only other thing that I thought is something uh, positive to talk about when it comes to the Slammy Awards was Road Dog finally returned. Oh, you didn't know? I kind of knew. Kind of saw it coming. <laughs> You are nah. better call somebody. I'm a big fan of Road Dog. I've always liked him. So I'm glad to see him back in WWE. He's one of those guys that, along with Goldust and a couple of the other people who have kind of been doing a lot of like backstage stuff, uh, I sort of had like a list of people that I wanted to see work backstage in WWE back when I was uh, fans when they were in their primes. Shawn Michaels was one of them. I always thought he would be great for developmental. Yeah. Uh, Sean Waltman, too, another guy for developmental. He's got hep C. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a whole laundry list of, of uh, people that I think would be good. And Road Dog was always one of them. So I'm glad that he's going to be a producer and work backstage. I hope that they can get him to maybe wrestle a couple matches here and there if he's up for doing that. And uh, if anybody's uh, not aware, Road Dog was doing a show with Billy Gunn, uh, hashtag O U D K. I thought that was pretty entertaining. I hope that they, even though they're not on the road together anymore, I hope that they can still figure out a way to do something with that. Um, that was a good show. So follow them on Twitter. I'm going to plug other people. And unfollow Tony Mango on at Tony Mango. <laughs> <laughs> on at uh, John Cena. <laughs> Just yeah, unfollow, unfollow me there. This is the reason why why we do smack talk. It's not his, his real name isn't Tony Mango. It's John Cena. <laughs> you heard it here first. This was Cena's big secret. Uh, so the only other thing to talk about, we are going to talk about in part three, dedicated a whole section here to Kane returning. Stay tuned. <laughs> 